Hey guys, Gaddick Teague here, and this is the SWOTOR Weekly Digest for December 21st, 2012. Another week, another news bombshell from Bioware. Oh, you haven't heard about Rise of the Hut Cartel? Well, let's cut the chatter and check out the Gold Post summary. So let's start by getting the smaller bits of news out of the way before diving deep into the big reveal. First up, another week, another server crash. This time, the Harbinger Red Eclipse servers fell victim to the server instability bug going around, resulting in both being down for about an hour. At this point, I feel like I should stop reporting about servers crashing and just report when all the servers have no problems for the week. In other news, after scheduled maintenance on Tuesday, players were prompted to download patch 1.6.1. The patch introduced a few bug fixes, including incorrect gear requirements for some elite war hero gear that I reported on last week. Also, several items in the cartel shop have been discounted, so if you've been waiting to purchase some older items, you should go check out the list. Strangely, patch 1.6 did not address the spawning issues occurring in Terror from Beyond. Amber Green reports that it's still a known issue, but it will have to wait till the new year to be resolved. Patch 1.6.1 also introduced two new sets of gear to the cartel market. The Valiant Jedi and Sith Raider armors are two iconic looking wardrobe pieces that you can see my character modeling here. And now for the big announcement coming from Bioware this week, the Rise of the Hut Cartel digital expansion. Tuesday afternoon, Bioware launched the Rise of the Hut Cartel announcement page on the main site, alerting players that in Spring 2012 they will be treated to five new levels a new world storyline revolving around the Hut Cartel, and the release of the new planet Makeb. Players can pre-order the expansion for $19.99 or $9.99 if you're a subscriber. Players who pre-order by January 7th will be given five days of early access upon release, so if you want to avoid the crowds on day one, make sure to place your order quick and get a nice head start. Despite some hints in the past to the contrary, it is now confirmed that there is no way to pay for the expansion with cartel coins, so even subscribers will have to fork over the $10 for the update. Following the big announcement, a few more details were announced through forum posts. This gold post from Allison Berryman gives a little bit more detail on the lore of the expansion. It sounds pretty interesting to me, and I'm definitely excited to see more new story content in the game. Speaking of story content, Jeff Hickman wanted to clear up some confusion regarding class stories. He confirms that there will be no class stories in Rise of the Hutt Cartel, but there will be increased focus on the Empire vs. Republic dynamic in their respective faction storylines. Allison Berryman also gave us some details on how the talents and abilities will work in the new expansion. Players will receive five new skill points, have their talent trees expanded, and each advanced class will gain one new active ability. All pretty exciting stuff, but I hope it comes with a reorganization of the talent trees that needs some tweaking. Lastly, the most exciting post to me was this one, stating that players will not be replacing their top-end gear with quest items as you level. I for one hate replacing my upper-tier rating gear that I worked long and hard to get with stupid quest rewards for finding the first quest area in an expansion. I think it would behoove Bioware to tune the beginning of Makeb to players who are wearing Tyanese or Recruit gear, and have them level receiving blue and green equivalent versions of Rakata, Kalumi, and Campaign as they go. Make Dreadguard the entry-level gear for the first operation post-expansion, so there's still incentive to run and possibly level by running older operations, but also provide a means for players to get Dreadguard through hard-mode flashpoints and story-mode ops now tuned for players wearing campaign-level gear. This is how I would handle gear progression throughout the new expansion. How would you deal with it in Rise of the Hut Cartel? Leave a comment and let me know your ideas. And with that, let's take a look at some featured fansite articles in Surfing the Holonet. Tour Wars got an exclusive written interview with SWOTOR executive producer Jeff Hickman. Lots of juicy information there to digest, so check out TourWars.com for the full transcript. One of my favorite fansite features is Crowd Control over on DarthHater.com. This time they're surveying the community about all things the cartel market, so I highly recommend you head over there and fill out the quick survey. The Tactical Strike column over on CorellianRun.com gives an incredibly detailed breakdown of the ancient Hypergate war zone, so if you're interested in PvP at all, it's a must read. Several great podcasts came out this week, so without further ado, here are your galactic transmissions. Tor Wars podcast episodes number 123 and 124 were posted this week, both chock full of interesting discussion and information. 
Episode 123 discusses ship parts and the future of same-gender romances, while episode 124 covers the announcement of the new expansion and their exclusive interview with Jeff Hickman. Episode 124 is especially worth a listen just for the great intro celebrating the one-year anniversary of the game. Darth Hater released podcast episode 144, focusing on their opinions of the rise of the Hut Cartel announcement, as well as covering some of the community's responses to their two previous Open Forums articles. Podcast episode 85 over on Corellian Run Radio discusses the lack of a true anniversary event and the implications of pay-to-win space missions. The Utini cast episode 57 was released last week where they discussed the new ancient Hypergate Warzone, as well as their usual features including the trivia question of the week. That's all the headlines from this week. If you like what you've seen, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any SWOTOR news updates. Until next week, this is Gaddick Teague, signing off.